When I went to the Sony press event last week, I was stunned, as I think most people were, at the specification of the brand new A7 Mark III. But really, on the day, we only got sort of first initial impressions, didn't have the camera for very long. Now, I've got a production model, and I've come to Brands Hatch Race Circuit in Kent in order to test it out. Today has a decibel cutoff of 114, which is super high for brands. And you're only allowed to test if you have an MSA race license. So we should see some pretty nice cars and hopefully some good driving. For any of you who managed to miss the release of the A7 Mark III, let me break down some of the major specs for you. It's got a 24.2 megapixel Exmor R back illuminated CMOS full frame sensor with a Bion Z X processor and front end LSI for really quick, effective operation. Dual card slots, and a much better battery life make it a better option for professionals, really far better than the Mark II was. And it can shoot 10 frames per second in RAW with continuous focus and auto exposure. Now, before we get started, it is worth remembering that the A7 III is the entry level offering from Sony into their A7 series. They themselves have deemed it the basic model, which is clearly a tongue-in-cheek message to the industry to show what they can do at such a low price point. So coming up here, they're on this like blind hill, but it's a really good test. See here, as they come over the hill, because he's so low, you just can't see him. Um, and so it, it picks him up really, really well as he just comes over this blind hill. But if they do struggle at all, having the touch focus point lock on here, here as well, I can, I can sort of set it where I want it, so I know where they're going to come over, and then they automatically track from that point. So I know where he's coming over, set the lock on, and there he is. It just locks on exactly where I want it to, it's brilliant. Now being at a track like this, obviously it's going straight into high plus drive mode, which gives us 10 frames per second or 8 in live view. Now, we're about to have a very loud car. In 10 frames per second, in that continuous shooting, you can still use auto exposure and continuous autofocus, which obviously here is going to be fantastic. Now, we've just spent some time up at the top of Druid, which is a second bend at Brands Hatch, and you've got a nice blind hill there. So being able to use big zone AF with lock-on tracking has been perfect. The camera picked it up really, really quickly. From what I could see in camera, the shots were coming out really sharp. 90% of the time it was hit in focus, which is mega impressive. So we've just come a little bit further around the track here. You can see the cars coming down round behind me. We're going to try that tracking a little bit more here. See how well the frame rate holds on all the way around this long sweeping bend. There's no doubting that shooting with the Mark III isn't even vaguely comparable to shooting with the Mark II. The Sony have definitely put a lot of the A9's technology into this camera. The Mark II had just 117 phase detect points and 25 contrast detect points. So the tracking was nowhere near as effective. This has 693 phase detect points, 693 across 93% of the sensor, which is just massive. And it's also got 425 contrast detect points, which are pushed slightly more towards the center for just an even more effective focus. You can even set tracking sensitivity from one to five. So you can track really slow, predictable moving subjects to really high paced, fast moving, unpredictable subject. And the camera will get a better lock on if you select the right level because it will be understanding more where you need that focus point to move to. Now, I know some people have mentioned that the Mark III is only 24 megapixels and maybe they've had an A7R or other cameras that have got really high megapixels. But actually, 24 megapixels on a full frame sensor is really nice. You can still get incredibly sharp results, as we'll show in this video. The pixels are slightly larger, so noise ratio is good. And with this camera, you've got the Bion ZX processor and the front end LSI, which make the readout speed from that 24 megapixel sensor incredibly quick. In fact, it's two times quicker than the Mark II. Now, because of that, this camera shoots 14-bit RAW. And because the internals are so efficient, it means that you can shoot that 14-bit RAW when shooting continuous burst rate of 10 frames per second. So the whole thing works together very nicely. Nothing's overdone and it just makes for a quick, efficient body that can produce really sharp, nice results. 
You can shoot at the full 10 frames per second in silent shooting mode, which doesn't matter at a place like this, but during a wedding ceremony or in the presence of a woodland creature that hasn't quite noticed you're two feet away, that could be absolutely priceless. IAF is something that Sony prides itself on, and there's a reason for that. It is awesome. Loads of cameras have features on the side that are meant to help photographers get the perfect shot, but actually sometimes they really can be more of a hindrance. And as a reviewer, they would never be something to focus on, but IAF actually works. It's not a gimmick, it's brilliant. With such a huge amount of focus points available, there needed to be an easy way to navigate them, and Sony have provided. Essentially, a7 III has exactly the same external body as the a7R III, and that means a joystick on the rear so that you can use your thumb for AF point selection, which is actually very effective, especially in the viewfinder. The rear LCD is touch enabled, so you can select your focus points really easily, with this mode working well in live view, and again, whilst you're looking through the viewfinder as well. The record button is now near the viewfinder and on a raised bevel, so it's far easier to find but also it's far less likely to be pushed accidentally due to just your tight grip on the camera. You can see as we zoom in here, the images are incredibly sharp and stay that way, even when heavily cropped. If we're being realistic, unless you shoot maybe some landscapes or billboard or high-end commercial, this is probably gonna be enough resolution for most other styles of shooting. Now, as much as we all love the images you can get with an a7R 3 those 42 megapixel, really high res, super sharp images, there is one problem with it, and that is space. 42 megapixel uncompressed RAW files are huge, and having a 24 megapixel sensor really does help to bring those file sizes down and save you some space when you're working on them at home, on your hard drives, and also in camera so you can shoot for longer on the same card. Now, one upside of the Mark III over the Mark II is that it does have a dual card slot, one of those slots being rated to UHS-2 speeds. It does mean you'll be able to shoot for longer in camera without having to change card. And also, if you do want to do professional shoots, dual card slots are a must-have. It just allows you to back up as you go. So if you're in the middle of someone's wedding, you at least know you've got a double copy of the perfect moment. Sony quote 15 stops of dynamic range on this body which means you should get a nice, smooth gradation through images, giving really natural looking shots. Native ISO is 100 to 51,200, expandable to 50 to 204,800. Now, it's really unlikely you're gonna use it up at 204,000, but with a back illuminated sensor, high ISOs that you might not normally use due to noise problems, actually have a far better noise ratio and are more usable down at the sort of 6,000, 8,000, 10,000 level. Here is an example of some low light images taken in exactly the same settings with just the ISO being adjusted each time. The images are still usable even at these high ISOs, with the noise being very manageable at a far higher level than you would expect from an entry level full frame camera. Here I've had to stop down the shutter speed so that we can still expose the image a usable amount for the test. With such a usable ISO range, handheld shooting becomes easier. And what helps is the in-body five-axis image stabiliser, which can counter for up to five stops of movement. No one can accuse the Mark III of being a one-trick pony. It is versatility. Under the word versatile in the dictionary, there is now just a giant picture of this camera. And for good reason. I could have done a hundred different tests with this camera to show it off, but it's really a tool that allows you to create rather than you having to create around its limitations. And that's not just for stills, that's video as well. You can shoot beautiful 4K videos with full frame readout and no pixel binning for extremely high resolution results. You can shoot S-Log2 and S-Log3 for colour grading, as well as hybrid log gamma for instant HDR workflow. And you've got a slow and quick motion mode, allowing for slow motion at 120 frames per second. Shooting all that video, or even loads of continuous frames at 10 frames per second, is a very battery thirsty exercise. Now, we know with the Mark II, the battery life wasn't great, but Sony have listened and put this Sony A9 battery into the Mark III. So you can get, they're quoting, 710 shots out of this body, which is huge for a mirrorless. Now, if I'm right, I'm pretty sure 710 shots is also the most amount quoted in the mirrorless market. So that's a huge step up from where Sony was sitting before. Also, not having to change your battery so much is gonna make things far more convenient 
for professional shooters. If I had to use one phrase to describe this camera, it would be well-rounded. It just does so much for so little cost. And it is easily a body that Sony can take out into the industry and say, hey, go on, switch to Sony, why not? And I would have a really hard time finding a reason as to why not. What mirrorless is offering here, the focal points, the range of coverage on the sensor, the movie modes, all of it, and all for under £2,000. It is simply a stunning little body. If you need any more information on the A7 III, please just pop onto wex.co.uk.